With our digital cameras, we can capture maybe three and a half, possibly four stops of light, uh, which doesn't do as much good in, say, a scenic like this where we've got that bright sky and possibly the foreground is in shadow or, or even, uh, you know, uh, even if it's just not lit fully with the sun, uh, you can't really balance those things out unless that's just full on lit. So in order to get that information onto uh, our uh, final image, we're going to combine three separate captures. This one was exposed just for the sky, and when it was processed in RAW, it was also processed a little bit more toward the blue side to give, it, to give that sky a little extra, because we're working on some art here. We're not necessarily capturing super reality. Um, so we're not worried about the uh, shift in color down here. This image for the trees was captured and processed with just a little extra yellow and green in there, and then this with the red rocks was captured with just a little extra red. Now if you were stuck and you only had one image captured, let's say it was this one here, you could process it three separate times in Camera Raw to give you a similar look. It's not going to be quite as good as capturing three separate exposures, but it can save your butt someday. So let's uh, hide bridge there and go over to Photoshop and take a look. And here's uh, our first image. We've got the trees image, and I'm going to use that for the base. Uh, we could use whatever we like, but that's that's going to be the base. And let's grab one of these other images. And we'll take the one for the sky. I'm going to hold down the Command or Control key. And that gives us our Move tool. And I'm going to click on the image, drag it over, hold down the Shift key, and that will put everything in register. These were captured on a tripod, so there was no movement there. And we can see that. If you wanted to check, you could go into the Color Mode neighborhood and check Difference. And if you look there, there's no change. If we uh, shift it over a little bit, you'll see what it would look like if it was out of register. And we'll undo that, go back to normal. So that's a great way to check and uh, process things if you're uh, putting them together that way. So we can get rid of that image. And we'll take the image of the trees and drop that on there. Same thing, hold down the shift key, that keeps it in register. Now for now, we're just going to uh, turn that off and turn that off. I want to make a selection of the sky area. Now rather than making a selection when the sky area is like this, um, we have a lot more contrast in the image below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the magic wand and I'm going to make sure that contiguous is not checked because I don't think it's going to grab any color or any areas down there. And I'm just going to click in there and see what it grabs. Okay, I got a lot of the white. Um, let's go ahead and hold down the shift key and click again in another area and in another and just keep holding down the shift key that adds to the selection and that looks like that's got a pretty good pretty good little neighborhood there now I'm going to expand that selection just a little bit and we can do that by going to refine edge and you saw me automatically uh, try and go back to where CS2 had their uh, neighborhood for making this change. We're going to expand that just a little bit. And the nice part about CS3 with this new Refine Edge tool is we can see the exact neighborhood of what's going on. And that's what it looks like on a black background. That's on. Uh, that's just the mask itself. And uh, that looks pretty good. So we're going to say, and we want to feather that just a little bit. We've already got a 3 tenths feather. And we're working with a very small image here. So the 3 tenths of a pixel works good and we'll say OK. So now our selection is made. What I want to do is go to our layer that has the sky on it and I want to leave the sky behind and clear the information underneath. So I'm going to invert the selection. That was uh, Shift, Command, or Control I for invert. And then I'm going to put a mask on. And I did it wrong. So let's <laughs> Control Z, go backwards, Shift Command I, let's go back one more. And now we'll just put the mask on. Ah, there we go. Now we got to keep the sky and we got our foreground too. That's a pretty good little spot right there. And you see how well this blended together? Sometimes you can have a little problem with that, but that seems to have worked out pretty well. We've got one more image, and this has the, uh, the red rocks. And I'm going to also add a mask to that. We'll turn it on first and add a mask. And I'm going to fill that mask. We didn't fill it with uh, holding down the Option or Alt key. So instead, I can hit the Command or Control key and delete. 
and now I've added a mask to the wrong layer so let's go up to the layer we're working on and we're gonna try that again we'll put the mask on there's our mask and we want to fill it by hitting command or control delete and you see the mask is on um, the only area that I want to grab from this image is in the red rocks here so I'm going to use the paintbrush to make this selection and again we have a black mask over here and we're going to poke through it with a with the white we're going to make a hole in the mask if you want to think of it that way and let's do that at 50 percent I just hit the 5 key to make my paintbrush 50 percent and just bring in some of that deep dark red that was in that image underneath there and if we want a little bit more we could paint it a little bit more so now you can see how we can put together an image that has detail in the sky, detail in the shadow areas, and detail in the midtones all the way across. So let's, um, let's go ahead and take a peek at what that uh, image looks like. Final, it's all by itself. We hit the tab key, F key, F key, F key, and command or control zero. And that's what our final image looks like.